So I like to always, uh, illust I, I, I love this illustration from Miklos's paper. Um, and if you notice, there's like little objects in there. These are drones, okay? So um, it's very nice to have the drones fit in there um, as validators of information at the physical world level and also at the mirror world. So I see that drones and other types of camera devices are a, you know, impartial information transmitter that could provide the information, the validation of the transactions to create a uh, digital twin, if you want to call it that, um, in the smart contract layer. And this again is the Vassarelli paper. Um, this is, you know, a very amazing illustration here about how we have a third third ledger. You know, we have two, you know, separate parties, a supplier, a company, or a company and a customer, and how the blockchain ledger it really serves as a neutral recording of the transaction. And so each company or party still has his or her own uh, ledger or general ledger they follow on their own side, but they don't, they don't have to work so hard or we don't have to work so hard as auditors to validate or verify uh, the transactions. So some of the issues that was brought up in this paper, which I think still pertain, you know, so, you know, the question is have blockchain streams really expanded to unmanageable sizes? It's what's happened with the, the you know, the, the transaction streams? Uh, what kind of accounting data should be recorded in a blockchain? So maybe it's really, uh, you know, in terms of return on investment, perhaps it's better to invest in this when we have, you know, different parties, outside parties working on a transaction together. Should large enterprise and governments play the role of the main promoters in acceptance phase? You know, so there is all these questions here they raised in their paper. Also, some more issues they brought up was, you know, how can the original blockchain be adjusted for real-time reporting insurance purposes? Should the accounting standards be changed, which I believe um, Jennifer is going to talk about shortly, and so Eric. And what are the, you know, what kind of standards should be created to, to enforce the audit of smart contracts and also about controls? So basically, I just want to, you know, encourage us all to, and we have to wrap our hands around the fact that we need accounting, but we also have to buck the trend, I think, to some degree of regulatory guidance because it may lose a, it's a lot of its uh, unique conditions and, and features if we allow too much regulatory and centralization to occur. So with that, I thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to hearing the rest of the panelists.